Let's hear it for Claire Underwood, 2016. House of Cards, Season 4. Now, this is the last season that Bo Willimon will be writing on the show. As announced, about a month before Season 4 was released, Netflix not only announced that it, the series was renewed for a fifth season, it also announced that Bo Willimon would no longer be writing for the show. So when watching this fourth season, I was looking carefully, trying to see, you know, the signs, like, was Bo Willimon getting bored? And then I realized that the only episodes he wrote for the season were the season premiere and the season finale. In the first three seasons, he wrote more episodes. He probably wrote, like, five episodes per season on average. I think even more the first season. So next season, the series, the head writers of the series are going to be Melissa James Gibson, who was the co-producer for this season, and supervising producer Frank, uh, Puglis? 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 Correct me in the comments. Anyway, this season of House of Cards, it's election season, and it covers like half of 2016, too. Uh, like the first half. No, not really the first half, more like the, like, first 10 months of 2016. Frank Underwood has to battle in the primary to be the Democratic nominee for president. He also has to deal with his marital problems with Claire, which are a little bit rocky. This season sheds a bigger spotlight on Claire. Claire realizing that she just doesn't want to be the first lady anymore. She wants to be in a position of power. Now, Scandal did a bit of this with the Melly character, and she didn't just want to be the housewife of the White House. I think it's handled a lot more interestingly here, as she wants to run for Congress, uh, but that doesn't work, so she tries another way. Uh, but, but ultimately, it felt a lot like the first season. In the first season, it was about Frank scheming his way to, uh, well, in this case, the vice president, and eventually skimming his way to the top, but we had to go through a slow second season to do that. In this season, it's Claire doing that. Claire scheming her way higher. I'm not going to say where she schemes her way to, but scheming her way higher. Also in this fourth season, elements of Frank's past come back to haunt him. Lucas Goodwin gets out of prison and wants to basically take revenge against Frank, and the way he does that is actually kind of surprising. Also, the Republican nominee for president, Will Conway, portrayed by Joel Kinnaman, he makes an interesting character because he's like the younger family man. Like, he's young, he's spry, he's got a hot wife and beautiful children, whereas Frank and Claire are older, more establishment and they don't have any kids so there's that to deal with there's also an issue of terrorism there's a terrorist unit called ICO which is obviously ISIS but I don't know maybe they were worried they were gonna get death threats from ISIS on on the show so they call them ICO instead the uh, Islamic Caliphate organization I think that's what they called it season four was definitely my favorite season of the series since season one it had the pacing of season, well, not quite the pacing, but it had something close to the pacing of the first season. It had kind of the intrigue of the first se the first season. Maybe Bo Willimon realized that writing about a character scheming from a low position to a high position is much more interesting to write than just kind of a character that stays there. And maybe that's why he gave more writing duties to some of his other writers. Maybe it was more collaborative. Maybe they had better ideas on how to make it better, how to, I mean, obviously they came up with a way to make Claire more important than she's ever been. And the interesting thing is, like, the uh, what Claire ends up doing in the show, it feels a, kind of unrealistic, objectively, until you consider that Donald Trump is running for president. <laughs> uh, let me do a spoiler warning so I can explain what I'm talking about. So spoiler warning right here, three, two, one, Claire wants to be vice president for Frank. And Frank ends up going with it. Frank realizes, okay, that's a way we can help each other. If this is a way we can fix our marriage, we can make this work. And they work like a team, a really great team. It was so great to see that again, but like in a better way than ever before. But here's the thing. The first lady being the vice president 
to the president to the the her husband like when you think about that for a second it sounds mind-blowingly unrealistic at, uh, in any sense of the word but <laughs> i feel like this series benefits from real events because now we have a blowhard sorry i'm gonna i'm about to get really political into this a blowhard all talk no substance uh you know crazy pandering candidate that has no political experience whatsoever now being a front runner for the Oval Office seat. We have that going on right now. So, you know what? Having Claire be potentially the Vice President of the United States to her husband, Frank, it doesn't seem all that unrealistic anymore. It seems like it makes more sense. Like, somehow House of Cards actually became more realistic than our current political climate right now. It's weird. It's weird how things have changed. I don't know how long it's going to last. For all we know, season five might come off a little outrageous uh, next year. Maybe things will come down next year. Who knows? But I found that quite fascinating that I was able to buy that. Even though I'm having difficulty buying what's really going on in the real world. I'm also kind of glad that the season didn't end on... Uh, presidential election like i thought it was going to end with the presidential election and we were going to find out well who wins the white house but i think that's that's going to be something that's revealed in the beginning of the fifth season not at the end of the fourth and the way the fourth season ends is pretty like kind of dark and a little bit frightening about the direction of the series like frightening in terms of the story world of like what frank is going to do as well as Claire. I mean, there was that... The last scene actually has Claire break the fourth wall with Frank. So I wonder if we're going to see some Claire narration next year. That would be fascinating. I would love to see Claire Underwood narrate the story with Frank or without Frank talking to the audience as well. That would be cool. House of Cards Season 4 renewed sort of my faith in the show. I was a little bit at a low point of the th third season. I was a little kind of, eh, I'm not sure. Uh, but the fourth season really brought me back, and um, it's exciting. And I can't wait. Uh, I just hope that the new writers don't run it to the ground. Uh, a lot of times, sometimes that happens. You get a new showrunner, and then they just kind of run it down. I don't think it's quite happened with Walking Dead yet. Uh, but other times, that's kind of what happens. Uh, especially when you lo you've lost a writer that's like so impactful to the series and all of that. That's my review of House of Cards Season 4. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.